I'm Evelyn Samuelson, and welcome to Eric's apartment, and we're hosting The Cinephiles today. Uh, today, to my left, Mr. Jeff Galishaw. How are everybody? To his left, Eric Cohen. This is his place. And to his left, my fault. Gloria, where are you? Okay, this is Eric's topic today, and, and the show is of Oscar winners. We we're talking about films that should have won the Oscar but didn't, weren't nominated but should have been, and ones that won and didn't deserve it. Now, uh, Eric... This is, a, this is a topic I know you have a lot to say about. I mean, what film, let me just start off with this. What film do you think is the absolute worst Oscar winner ever for Best Picture? Ever for Best, uh, um, honestly? Is like, yeah, which one is like, holy Forrest shit. Forrest Gump. Really? Because hmm. it went up against Pulp Fiction. That was upset. A, now, let me ask you, when it was, when it, when, 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 Forrest Gump was favored to win from the beginning. Was it correct? Am I correct? Or did you well, think Well, let me, let me, let me dwell win? deeper into my criticism. Okay. I thought Forrest Gump wasn't near as subversive as people thought it was. I thought it missed the boat and satire entirely, with its, you know, the considering that they're doing the Zalik stuff where they have him incorporated. And plus, anybody, I, I had friends that would say, you know, after that film came out, like friends who I thought I respected enough to let it go, but I couldn't, where they say, oh man, I saw Forrest Gump, it changed my life. Like, I had a friend why? that said the why? same thing too. What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? And I'll tell you another reason why. It's, it's very simple. Three, three, three words. Former movie, Little Big Man. Oh, Little yeah. Big Man. I'll tell you what, you, let's put Forrest Gump on the stove, boil it down to its very essence. You know what it is? Forrest Gump is a film about a retarded man that succeeds. George Bush? Yeah, well. <laughs> Sorry, but the sequel he doesn't. The sequel, because of the Apple stock, he, he gets in a movie and in, in a book, and all the sequel, they actually like goes bust. But, uh, but the thing, the point is, it's like, it's not an original story. It's been done before with a naive character, goes through different key moments in history in a specific time. And, you know, it's, it's been done before. It wasn't original, but everyone was making out like, oh, no, no one's ever seen something like this before. It's changing my life and the meanings and everything. Life I was but a box of fucking chocolate. You know, I, I, I a hate fucking that piece of shit The film. reason I hate it, I think it's a very mean-spirited film. I really do. Where, you know, you see, I, I, as my friend pointed out, I mean, for years I just didn't think too much about it. Then when I got older, more political, not, not trying to put political stuff in there. It's very conservative. You know? But what, what's not that it's conservative oh, or liberal? It's just, it's hammered. very, it's candy color. It's, 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 it's sappy. It's just Dream sappy. I can't even believe you brought up the term like, subversive. That's the most unsubversive film. That's what I said. I said, I I said like, people were telling you that it was more subversive than it actually was. It wasn't. It's not that politically intelligent either. It's just a very simple, dumb thing. And it's too bad, because I like Tom Hanks. I think he's done some extraordinarily good work. And some people may disagree with me, but I think he's really good. I, I, I think Tom Hanks, when he's challenged, he's a very good actor. I, I like, I like Mrs. One. Sean Penn. I like, uh, you know, Gary Sinise. I mean, I'm glad that that film kind of, uh, you know, made his career as a, from, from just being like a journeyman actor to being sort of a star. Unfortunately, he wound up doing a lot of like the same parts, same, playing the same villains and the same action type. You know, reindeer games. Yeah, I, just, I, really, I think that's a good choice, though. I think Forrest Gump really is an overrated film. When I Gary Sinise him. was in Reindeer Games? Yes, he was. He was a bad guy. He was a bad guy. It had bad yeah, I, wasn't going, I wasn't going out of my way to say it. But no, I, agree with you. I, think, I think in a few years, people are going to agree with you on Forrest Gump and see it. It's not really as good as that. I think people movie. already are. Do you think so? Yeah, I think so. Okay, let me throw this out at you guys then. Do you think Forrest Gump was a worse film than, let's say, Crash? I think Crash is one of the bottom of the heap ones. That was actually one of my picks for. That's actually a good Oscar. question because I don't know. I was more angry at Forrest Gump than I was at Crash. Well, the thing about Forrest again. Gump was the one against Pulp Fiction. I mean, that's. Well, I was, I, I was. That was the key reason why I was pissed. I was like, I was like, okay, you guys don't know what good filmmaking is if you can't recognize this film, but you're going to give it all to this. I, I say that Forrest. I hate this is just in the topic on, on Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump is like dirty dancing. For the people that think, you're, pretty, you're, you're right. It could be in the it's, same it's, universe. It's like it's like it's like it's, it's like it's like people who think Dirty Dancing is a special film, adolescent film for them, are gonna love Forrest Gump and think it's a deep film. Do you think Do you think Forrest Gump is worse than Dances with Wolves? Uh, I yes, I do. Because I do think Dances with Wolves has some good stuff. Dances with Wolves is is partially a good film. There's some really good stuff. It's, it's beautiful cinematography. Even though there's some self indulgence. Do you stuff. think? Okay, all right. Let me throw this out. Do you think it was a bigger crime that Forrest Gump beat out Pulp Fiction than it was Dances with Wolves beating out Goodfellas? I, I have, oh, gotta go with, I gotta go with, I gotta go with, I gotta go with Goodfellas because Goodfellas yeah. is, 
Exactly. Even though my I gotta favorite say, movie of all time. I gotta say, I'm gonna say no, no and no. for for a very simple reason. Not that I don't respect anyone saying because Goodfellas, yeah, absolutely was a thousand times better. However, I would say that at the time, although now it may not seem so much because he seems to be making the same kind of movie. At the time, Pulp Fiction was completely revolutionary. It was taking certain aesthetic that no one ever associated with being a good, you know, filmmaking. And turning into brilliant filmmaking, and that was Goodfellas. We've seen Martin Scorsese do that before. I mean, that wasn't unusual. We've seen him, uh, yeah. but now you can look back. Yeah. It's a great film. Yeah, if you right. put Goodfellas and Pulp Fiction side by side, I'm, uh, Goodfellas is going to win that. All I, the time. It depends. It, it, that's a matter of opinion. That's objective. I, no, but, but I, I don't. But, think that's but, a fair but, you, but if you line up ten current filmmakers right now and ask them what, I mean, there's been a lot of filmmakers that went on record saying Goodfellas was their like template. On, on what they were doing. John Favreau has said that. The Hughes brothers have said that. I mean, not a I'm lot saying. of people have used Pulp Fiction <laughs> as a template. But don't you think that all Pulp Fiction did was give us a lot of Pulp Fiction ripoff movies in the 90s? That's one thing I so really So has Mark Scorsese. The there's, there's, there's a lot, there was a lot of gangster ripoffs due to, you know, whatever, you know. Even Mark Scorsese's yeah, exactly. ripped off himself. The Casino you know, was just another variation of Goodfellas, you know? I well, see, but then we can go back to the argument but, that Tarantino but, but, makes but, I mean, this film is, Exactly, that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying, that's what I'm saying. It's, 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 it's a dangerous ground to say which is the improvement over the other because they're... No, I'm saying which was the bigger travesty. I, I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying Pulp Fiction, for me, it was Pulp Fiction only because... That to me, it just made, angered me so much that people weren't recognizing revo what was at the time revolutionary filmmaking. But it's a and much darker and a much more challenging. Whereas film Goodfellas, it, it's like you know, Scorsese has you know been doing that. That was expected from Scorsese, as phenomenally good as that film is. Whereas Quentin Tarantino came out yeah, of nowhere. That came out of left field. And it, I give credit to Tarantino at that time. I mean, the filmmaking he was making could have been considered schlocky, you know, hipster doofus filmmaking. I mean, he really makes something and shows, hey, this is a great movie, and you know, he started. New, he started but I will say that, it. but what you're saying is, is that was expected out of Scorsese. Not really, because what he did is he took the gangster genre and turned it on its ear. Because we, it is a very different film. Because what gangster film did he make before that? Mean Streets? That's not really a gangster film. That's a neighborhood. He well, made he made uh, Raging Bull. Mm -hmm. You know that was before Goodfellas. Well, he made The King of Comedy. Well, I, see that where, was well, I can see where Mike's coming from. No, I see what you're saying, but I think what you're going down is you're trying to say no, you're yeah, wrong because well, this was yeah. this, and what you're you're no, citing to no, is, what, is an argument. What I think, I he's, what I think Mike is trying to say is that beforehand we had seen The Godfather, which is yeah. this great illustrious film where yeah, you know yeah. everybody wears these great suits it's more like business whereas goodfellas showed you the guys who were actually in the streets and doing the dirty work and showed that the life wasn't as glamorous I, as we have been I, my argument long, right? my argument is not i i love you goodfellas. took it down this pathway all right well let's do this i, 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 think, I like think we that. said that i think we both agree goodfellas and Paul fictions are two excellent films that should have won we shouldn't compare it to apples and oranges they're both great. I just, it just I, it, Pulp Fiction uh, had an impact on me at the time. It was the first time I saw it in a long time that I did not want to end while I was watching it. And Except I, I wanted to end whenever Quentin Tarantino was on the screen. Which wasn't a lot. Yeah, it was only like five I, And I remember there was a guy in back of me that this during, like, when he was talking right? about, you know, uh, you know, whatever he was riffing on, you know, uh, sorry guys, when he was talking about dead nigger storage. Mm. And uh, and the uh, YouTube fans. <laughs> and the yeah. I don't like him. you using that word. Slap them. Slap you. Dead Negro oh, yeah, story. But, but there was a guy. There was a guy <laughs> behind me that when he goes uh, when he's going off about like, do I look like this or whatever? And this guy behind me goes, shut up, Quentin. <laughs> I just thought. I kind of feel that way, and that was when I wasn't annoyed with Quentin at all. That's when I was kind of amused by the little character that he came out, you know, he was going to the Angelica, and he was drinking his hot chocolate on MTV, and he was talking to Kennedy. I kind of bought into this, like, here's this, like, little indie wonderkin that's made good, and he's made a really fantastic film and stuff. And so, and then when this guy's like, just shut up, Quentin, I thought... Let's get back on topic here. All right, anyways. Now, uh, so. now, you said Crash was yours. Which I think is a good one. Yes. Now we talk about that. So, I agree. Uh, uh, what about you, Mike? Really you had one. Well, I, you know, ironically, I was going to say now what I brought up with the examples of good, good fellows and dances with wolves and and uh, you know Pulp Fiction and Forrest Gump. I would say the one that just confused me and annoyed me was the fact that uh, a beautiful mind beat out the Fellowship of the Ring. I was just I was. 
just dumbfounded at that, that you had this uh, amazing cinema achievement with which what was at the time called an unfilmable novel for many filmmakers, including Stanley Kubrick. And then Peter Jackson, this, this little cult filmmaker out of New Zealand, makes this fantastic yeah. visual, uh, wonderful film and, and tells a story that's compelling and you know is going to lead to other stories. And then you had a beautiful mind, which it's Ron Howard. And as you coin, I'll give Eric the credit on this, he, he calls uh, Ron Howard Steven Spielberg light. Ron Howard, it seems, most of the time is incapable of making a deep film. Even when he's given deep material like Frost Nixon, it just, it escapes him. That's a crock of shit to get nominated for that. That was not a directed <laughs> movie. It's an adaptation of a stage play. Yeah. But, but I'm it, just it's saying. It's a film that worked better as a stage play. I bet it did. Everyone has that. So I'm just saying, that, that, that confused Sorry. me a little bit. I didn't uh, that, that, that confused and annoyed me. Although... There you go. Well, I think... Man, I agree with you, but what pissed me off about The Beautiful Mind was I thought it was the most overrated piece of shit. Well, I think the whole thing that... I really Beautiful thought that. And it's fictional, too. Got, uh, I think what got the audience was that whole little twist towards the middle of the film, whereas if you're paying attention, you'll see it coming anyway. Yeah, and it's I imaginary think, friends. Exactly, and I think that is what fooled the audience into, oh, man, I'm so shocked, it's so different. Whereas <laughs> with uh, Fellowship of the Rings, I agree with you now, me and you have disagreed on this film many times. I think it is an achievement of, uh, of Peter Jackson, but I think maybe the thinking was they knew that there were going to be three of these. That's so what everybody I'm says, just saying, but I'm, still. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying yeah. that is why I... And that's, it, poor, that's poor thinking. That's really poor thinking. I know, thinking. but it, with Oscars, you also have to... Instead of giving it the actual best film of the year, it's more politics than anything. i got to agree with him on that now. i got to say... I think Fellowship of the Ring, I have a, I'm proud to say I've been a Peter Jackson fan since 1988, since I saw Bad Taste. Honest to God, true. So I can say this. I think Fellowship of the Ring is the, the least entertaining He's of the better. entire series. I think the best one, and I think the one that really should have won the Oscar, was The Two Towers. I think that is the God, best. I, I couldn't disagree with you more. Even uh, though it's hard for me to criticize Two Towers, I felt that was the, the slowest one. I can't believe it. I mean, the thing with the tree, the tree character is one, 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 one of the most unusual and interesting characters I've ever seen in the world. The reason I why it. I say with The Fellowship of the Ring, which gets it almost, almost edges Return of the King for me, but it's very, very close, you have that beginning. And Peter Jackson had this wonderful quote on the DVD. He says, he wanted to make The Fellowship of the Ring, Two Towers, and Return of the King like James Bond movies. Get the audience from the get-go in those first few minutes, right. and then they'll never let you go throughout the whole film. And when you see that battle at Mount Doom, I mean, that is amazing. Those special effects with the volcano going off and the, the two armies battling, I was breathless. And then, to me, for, for genre filmmaking, the second they walk into the mines of Moria to the time they leave is perfect filmmaking. But you know, it's, it's I love, perfect. yeah, I agree perfect with you. genre filmmaking. But you see, my thing is, is like, I don't like one film above the other because there's always something in each film that's yeah. magnificent. Well, 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 like, like Two Towers, the battle scene at, oh God, I, I Helm's get, Deep. Helm's Deep. I think that's a much better battle scene than in the third film. Yeah, I disagree. It just that for some reason there's something there's a, an emotional component there where you just get the sense that they're doomed. This is it, but but I just I I loved how they handled that, and I was blown my, away by that. No, my problem is that they introduce so many characters and you have to learn all these characters' backstories in such a short period. And I mean, even though it's a three-hour movie, I mean, I really you know what I'm saying I really feel the other this one's set up the other movies. I know people say, oh, that's a thing, don't complain. Well, what, what else? What else? Because we spend a great deal of time talking about. Lord of the Rings and the Peter Jackson episode, whether they're like Oscar films. I, I, think of that well, I can take the one that, I mean, now, well, let, me pick, let me pick the movie that, like, since I'm sorry, because I, I was just, cause, you know, responding to you. Yeah. The one that I think, movie to me is a travesty, it didn't win, we're talking earlier. I think Rocky is a good movie, mm -hmm. but Network is the movie that really should have won the best picture that year. Yeah. Network is well, one of the most like films. Although I think it. Network's a little dated now. The dialogue, I think it's a little too on the nose in its political message. It's very prescient, though. And it's time. Very it's ridiculous. Right now. I just saw it again recently. I think it holds up wonderfully. I, I mean, it's it's got one of the best performances by uh, Peter, Peter Finch. Finch. I mean, people... Have Who voted. died just before the Oscar. Yeah, one of the first person. Now, of course, uh, Heath Ledger is next. But I think... That performance is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, there's a reason I'm as mad as hell. I'm not going to take it anymore. It's so well remembered. I mean, that, it's brilliant. Um, let's see. I only have one problem with the film. Is that uh, the woman who plays... Um, oh God, Faye, Faye Dunaway? No, Faye, not Faye Dunaway. The man's wife who Faye Dunaway sleeps. Beatrice Street. 
Yes, she won Best Supporting Actress for six the, minutes. Exactly, she's only in it for six minutes. That is the only complaint. Well, look at Judy Dench. She That's was I was saying Shakespeare loves another. Yeah, but at least she was in it for twenty minutes. No, she wasn't. Okay. Yes, she was. No, Judy yes Dench and no. I do like Shakespeare. Time. Time. They even published but that. But I, I, yeah, I don't think it deserved. Like, like the whole thing with Judy Dench. That's probably the worst example of being Oscar nominated for something. Because that to. they were but, rewarding her because she should have won yeah, it the year before for, yeah, but, uh, for um, but see, at least Brown. I can she, say that she should have won it for Mrs. But when Judy Dench, at least her scenes felt something. When it was in network, I didn't, I didn't feel anything from Beatrice Strait that deserved to even be nominated. She had one good scene. I, I still wasn't that impressed. Okay, let's do some either or, guys. That should have been best cameo. Let, let's do some either or here. Well, what do you think? Uh, do you think that ordinary people should have beat out Raging Bull? No. No. That's a travesty. That's a very easy one. I think Ordinary well, People is actually a pretty fantastic it's not, I think, or, yeah, I'm going to agree. Ordinary People is a good film. I that's, think Raging Bull is better, though, uh, but I'm just saying. Raging Bull is also one of my favorite movies of all time. Of course, Asian is a little film. He should have won the Oscar. So. But, but Ordinary People was a very good film. It, is it was difficult film. to pull off. That what they did in that film, and it's still Red for its deepest film by far. It could have been too the only dramatic. Made, yes, made. I mean, <laughs> not a big and Tim, fan. Timothy Hutton, very good performance. And that Mary Tyler Moore was wonderful. I wanted to say him for what has. You happened. didn't like A River Runs Through It. Uh, Donald Donald Sutherland was very good, trying to play this balance between his son that is still hurting. Mary Tyler Moore and Judge and Judge, no, right, and Judge Hirsch is huh? very good as well. Oh, yeah, the sun. He never gets enough. No, he doesn't. He's very good. Okay, how about an either or here? How about Chariots of Fire? That was one. Uh, what was Chariots of Fire going to say? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That's what I really think. Well, you said it before we were taping. What yeah, I think that's an overrated place? choice. Well, why, why do you feel it's overrated? I've never said it. Why do you feel it's overrated? <laughs> it, it's just so long and drawn out, and it's just endless I have scenes. to give it another look, because I was I was a kid when it came out, and I didn't give it a fair shake. All I remember is the school. I liked it. Was it. Vangelis. I like I like I liked it when I saw it when I was a kid. It's been a while since I've seen it. Oh, beat out Raiders of Lost Ark. That's what it beat out. I think. Well, I mean, I'm sure there are other films that are not. Yeah, but year, yeah, but years ago, I mean, let's face it, genre pictures did not have too easy of a time. And, I, and this is sort of Spielberg, like Spielberg at the time. And now, okay, uh, do you do you guys feel that it was fair that uh, the French Connection beat out Last Picture Show? You know what? That one doesn't bother me because both those films are, I think, equally excellent, but on different terms. I think, I think, the French Connection is perhaps the best police drama, you know, thriller ever made. I'm and glad. I, well, I'm glad it got recognized being the kind of film that it was. So that usually could have been a genre film. That was a B movie, basically. And uh, they recognized it. And, and it's it's one of the films that one of the rare films that that has a sequel that's just as good, I think. And it, I think it's actually yeah, a different movie too. completely, but I love it. it when you look back, it. it's actually rather shocking that it did beat out Last Picture Last Show. Because that's, that's Oscar bait that's actually intelligent exactly. and not that populist. Right, but that also was not because, a clap dead about because it. Last Picture fly. Show was far more adult and far more intelligent than the typical Oscar nominated film, that's probably why it didn't win. Peter Bogdanovich is his best film. It really is. Okay, now this oh, was not so much a best picture, but. You know, we were talking about this off camera earlier, and I was saying that there's some of the great performances that uh, that either were ripped off and didn't get the award, or were justly rewarded. What did you guys think of Ernest Borgnine winning for Marty over uh, uh, Marlon Brando for On the Waterfront? Oh, it's easy. I already know why he won the Oscar. It's a piece of cake because he did it on TV, did he not? And people knew the performance already, so I mean, people saw it. On TV, and then I saw the movie Ernest too. Burnham. They already knew the character. Oh, I don't know enough about the history. I said you know, it's not either or. You've I never seen, seen On the Waterfront? Wow. You see, that should have been something discussed on our Are They That Great. On the Waterfront's great, and Marlon Brando is That's fantastic. a powerful film that it does really not feel dated. Really, but amazing performance. Uh, but I, I will say that as it's much as Ross I, is great in that story. I, I thought that whole thing was a travesty when I saw On the Waterfront because I thought, how the hell can Marlon Brando lose because this performance is so powerful? And then I saw Marty and I thought, Ernest Borgnine is really damn good. He's he's a guy that's a kind of a simple guy, wears his heart on his sleeve. But the Pat Ichavsky, uh, uh dialogue is so good that comes out of this man's mouth. And, and you and you're really uh, so so you you know how old were you at the time when those two films when the when the Oscar that year? I was negative thirty two. Right. You know what? It's so funny though is that <laughs> I don't think you have to worry about that because thanks to Ernest Borgnine. Marlon Brando did get another Oscar. He, got a, he did get an Oscar because don't forget, Morgan I was supposed to play The Godfather. That's sure. true. Yeah, that's true. So well, he, okay. And don't forget, I think The Godfather. He turned up in an ER episode last week. 
Yeah, so much as are. I will say, so okay, and, and one thing, I, I, just speaking of greatest Oscar travesties, I don't want to forget this one, but I'm sorry, but Cuba Gooding Jr. beating out William Macy for Best Actor oh. is just... Show me the money! Oh, I just wanted to... You and your racist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> racist Michael Why, did you, Why did you have to make that one? Why did, all of them. Why did James Woods win for <laughs> Ghosts of Mississippi? I'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, the see Go that, that kind of saves me from me bringing up my Holly Berry versus Sissy Spacek argument. But the one I actually wanted to go either or, which I always find interesting, is Kevin Spacey for American Beauty winning over uh, Denzel Washington for The Hurricane. Now I know The Hurricane wasn't that great of a film, but his performance it's was pretty entertaining. But you're right, Denzel. Well, hey, I, I mean, let's talk about greatest Oscar ripoffs. Al Pacino's hoo-ha beat out Denzel Washington. Well, that was my second. That was going to be my second Holy one. Holy shit. Yeah, I agree with that. Holy shit. I didn't like either one of them, so. Yeah. But I, I, I oh, that's that unbelievable. I, mean, I remember being like, one of a huge Oscar, and I knew he wasn't going to win, but one of the big disappointments for me was when James Woods was nominated for but then went for Salvador. But I knew he wasn't going to win it. Yeah, it, was too small just, film. it was too small a film. It didn't get that exposure. I was impressed that he was even nominated. Oh, it was really good. You have, you have something about Platoon, don't you? I, we were talking about that. Well, I was going to say, Platoon's probably my favorite post-1980 Oscar winning film in terms of, you know, movies that deserved it. Oh, God. Um, in terms of, of actually being nominated and winning. That um, film still holds up today. It's still fantastic. It's, it's a great film. It's best a film. great film. It's a great and a great movie. ensemble film, too. Well, okay, I have a one quick question, because I know you're a notorious, not the biggest fan of Spielberg, but tell me, do you think Cider House Rules deserve to beat Saving Private Ryan for Best Picture that year, even though Steven Spielberg won Best Director? What no, but, but Cider House Rules didn't win Best Picture. Picture. It was Traffic. Oh, it was Traffic? Yeah. Traffic. See? Never mind. It, it only didn't deserve it. it. It's sad. <laughs> and that's a good question. It didn't I'll tell you about Saving Private Ryan, not to go crazy on this. Saving Private Ryan, great first half. Then it just becomes cliche character. You got the Jewish guy who's like, "Oh, the Nazis are gonna get me." Then you got the the Irish guy and all this. It just it's, it becomes. Well, a I mean, we've got every, we've everything, about everything that Ed just said, I agree with three hundred percent. Yeah, we've we've gone through this before. Spielberg really doesn't know how to end. He doesn't know how to do last acts. And by the way, my grandfather was at the beach of Normandy, so I'm very proud. Yeah, of yeah, and my grandfather fought the Pacific. But I agree with you. I, I agree with what you said, saying private. Uh, that year, I mean, it wasn't a very strong year for movies anyway. What we had Cider House Rules. Saving Private Ryan, Traffic, which Traffic is okay. It's overrated. It's a little over bloated. I really liked it at the time, but I, I wasn't sure if that was something that was going to hold oh, up over right. time. But, but, but Benicio sure. Del Toro's role as the uh, cop was very good. I got yes. one. I got one. A good one. Gladiator. I that, really, really enjoyed it. Gladiator I really liked it. It's an okay lot. movie, but it is not that. It won Best Special Effects, and the special effects in that have CGI some of the worst I've ever seen in the major. But, all, but let me the tell you, that's movie. also one of those things yeah. where people will just start doing the checks. It's like going into a voting booth. If you're a Democrat, you're going to just start marking Democrat, 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 you know, down the list. And that's what sometimes people do. I don't know so much anymore because people. Wait, would you care to explain that analogy again? You know how you're looking at the ballot. And you see it's if it's Gladiator, and right. they're just like, yeah, I like Gladiator. Gladiator this, Gladiator that, Gladiator special effects, Gladiator best sound, Gladiator best sound editing. You know, oh, you so mean in terms of the Oscars? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. yes. I think yeah. they said about their expectations oh. in terms of scene. I got one. Yeah. Titanic over L.A. Confidential. That's a, that's a tough one. But you I look like at Titanic Oscar. and it's like, well, this is Oscar bait from the get-go. Yeah, but but L.A. Confidential is just Titanic a more film. technical filmmaking versus L.A. Confidential just good filmmaking. But I will agree with you on one thing about Peter Jackson. Ah. Heavenly Creatures only got a Best uh, Original Screenplay yeah. nomination that year, and I thought it should have been up there for Best Picture and Best Actress for Kate Winslet. I thought the other actress was just as good, if not better. Melanie Linsky, she had more of the harder role to pull off, but I wasn't as impressed. She didn't make as deep an impression as Kate Winslet did in her. If it wasn't for that film, there would be no Peter Jackson as we know it today. Exactly. That's the film that got him the attention in Hollywood. And talk about good special effects. <laughs> okay, I, I have one that I, at the time, I was not too happy with. I did not think Silence of the Lambs was the best picture that year. Ooh, I thought, I got a script. I thought JFK was there. the best. No, I, I got a script. That I, year. Really Silence of the I think Silence of the Lambs, I don't like John Nick. See, I don't sucks. remember, I mean, you're, you're probably, I'm completely deferring to you. I just don't remember JFK being 
the same year as Silence of the Lambs. It was, 1991. I was glad Silence of the Lambs won, because so everyone was, was booking for Prince of Tide to win that year. <laughs> and I was like, no <laughs> fucking way. I, I just thought I just thought JFK was such a mind explosion of different ideas being thrown out. And I thought it was so compelling. And I think what it did is, uh, unlike Silence of the Lambs, it got people talking about history. It got people talking about what could or couldn't have been. And, and, and it provoked conversation, it provoked thought. The problem with JFK is, you have to agree, Kevin Costner is not that good at JFK. It's one of his best performances, actually. His and I don't like Kevin true. Costner. I even told John Frankenheimer I didn't like Kevin Costner. I heard, yeah. Well, you know what, but to, to, you have to say what you will about Science of the Lambs. That was a very unique film to be nominated, to be even recognized for Golden Globes and nomination. I, I, it's the first film since One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest to win the top uh, Best Director, Best uh, Actress, Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Screen. And I did not like Jodie Foster's The Oh, I thought that's the best Well, see, I thought Jodie Foster was good. I thought she was what the role required. I, I don't care for her as an actress, uh, but her, like, Hillbilly wrong. Woman, just how she was like supposed her, to be that cold like, exactly. and bad. Yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer was originally supposed to play that role. I think Jodie Foster was a perfect choice because she could play the white trash. I was going to say, just yeah. in ca Castle, I think it was a very unique film to be recognized in the way it was because essentially it was a horror film. It is a horror film. It's the first horror film to win Best Picture. So and and it's Jonathan Demme. I mean, he made that before Philadelphia, right? Yeah, the reason he made Philadelphia is because of the uh, and, uh, there was a lot of gay protesters against the film saying that. Yeah, do we think Philadelphia yeah, deserved all that? That's a piece of shit movie. That is a horrible movie. It, it's, it's a, it's a so very, bad. I don't think it's horrible, it's just very, it's just very preachy. Oh, it's, it's a very so, preachy film. it's so like, say, give me the fucking Oscar, I have a message to make movie. I'll give another perfect example oh, of a, best, a much better movie that, that, that talks about the same stuff as a movie called Long Time Companion, a low, low key movie. Yeah, but Bruce is a uh, very good film. Party Glance is another very, one, with Steve Buscemi, whose act was excellent, he plays a gay character. Long Time Companion, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Bruce, uh, Bruce, Davis. Bruce, Davis. Bruce Davidson was ripped off. Campbell Scott. Yeah. That's another film. I mean, that's a he film. Was, he was nominated, right? Yeah, he yeah, was, was nominated. The problem is, is that Philadelphia was made to say, we're making a movie to talk about this thing. We want an Oscar. And it, it, was also, it was also Hollywood's chance of patting themselves on the back for making it. Oh, of course. And that was like, look at Davis. us. We're making a film about gays and AIDS. Well, Hollywood does a lot. Great. Hollywood does a lot of that, though. They they have this thing where they make a mistake one year and then they try and make it up for the next year. I mean, that's what the Al Pacino. Exactly. Al Pacino should have been given the Oscar like three or four times before, but then he's given it to uh, the hoo ha role. Right. And I mean, you, it's you also get it. Too. You also get it playing disabled characters. Whenever a person is disabled and they play, they win. Well, the, well, the funniest thing about Kate Winslet's nomination, and even she had to acknowledge it, was you know the whole ex the famous. The great episode in Extras where she plays herself. She says the only way you can get an Oscar if you do, if you do something that's set in a Holocaust. It's true. And it happened in real life. Yeah, I like this. It's like let's see, let's see. I can name all of them right now. Uh, Holly Hunter, the piano. Uh, Al Pacino in the Sense of a Woman. We got. But the piano was a good film. Yeah, piano, piano was, was a good film. film. Very interesting. Uh, then, yeah, but there's numerous ones to mention. With John Boyd, did you mention the her? What do you guys think of more classic Very stuff that we want to see if it holds up? Like, uh, what we mentioned on Waterfront, what do you think about uh, From Here to Eternity? That's a good film. I like that quite a bit. Yeah. And and actually, actually, first, I saw it late, later in life, for a film fan. You'd think I'd have seen that you know, when I was a kid, but I saw it recently, and I was like, wow, this is good. Montgomery Cliff is really fucking good. I was just going to say, he's the worst part of the film. Really? Yeah. That's he Montgomery is. Cliff, honey. Yeah. yeah. I thought he. I thought Let he. Let live. Flash reference. A place in the sun. Uh, I, know, I, I just I thought he was so I think over he's the top. Oh, really good so in it. I think he and Burt Lancaster were well off each other. I thought. Uh, I, I thought, thought. I actually thought um, Frank Sinatra was a little. As Maggio. Yeah. But well, don't forget that's the movie that The Godfather. You know, they, they supposedly is you know the Johnny. Okay. That's that's why the that's you guys have no comment on from here to eternity. I haven't seen it in years. I do remember that there's some. It's really a very. Much. It's a good movie. I don't know if it's like the masterpiece you'd say, but it is a very good movie. That what about um, uh, Birdman of Alcatraz? There's some good. I've never seen it. Yeah. What? I haven't Tell seen a lot of Bert Lancaster. Tell us about us. It's very very good. Oh well, um, wait a minute. Was anyone Sweet Smell Success? Was anyone on it? Uh, I don't know. It no. should have been because both Lancaster and Curtis were wonderful. Because that that is an amazing movie. I mean, we tend to over uh, hype how good it is, but it really what? is that good. Sweet Smell of Success. And for some reason in my mind, I think so many, I mean, Lancaster did get nominated. And I remember this whole talk about recently, like, you know, what construes uh, a best 
Actor nomination versus a Best Supporting Actor nomination, and I think he was nominated for Best Actor, even though Tony Curtis had more screen time than he does. And I have a question for you guys because I don't I don't know how much time we have here, but um, what is your favorite Best Picture winner? Like a movie that's like your favorite, and it just happens to win Best Picture of all time? Yes, I can name mine very easily. I don't know. I don't know what. Films yeah, I'd have to really think. Are I'll, tell you what, I'll, I'll mention mine while you guys. Are well, mine's easy. Return of the King. Return of the King. Mine would be Midnight Cowboy, which that happened to be my favorite film of all time for quite a while. Santa Sangre is now eclipsed. Well, well, my favorite film uh, lost the Oscar in Goodfellas to Dances with Wolves. So. But which one is your favorite that actually won an Oscar? Do you have one? Mm. What do you think is the best movie to win an Oscar? I'll, I'll tell, tell you, you the most unexpected movie. movie to win the Oscar is No Country for Old Men. Actually, I was seeing that was going to happen. It was, I, I thought it was going to It was against competition that wasn't so great either, but... Well, hell, look at Fargo. Fargo won. No, Fargo did not win. Well, I'm sorry, that's our right. Yeah, it did win best right. That's hard. This is a hard call for me. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm very. I, I like your idea of yeah, Midnight Joe Cowboy. Cole I like Mike's. Fargo, Joe Cohen. Yeah. I like I like Mike's choice, but you know I have to like. I, I'm a, I, I'm reluctant to answer that question because I don't know. Pre-1980, all the films that yeah, won. That would be mine. I have to. Out of bad bad is very close. But I have, to, I have to remember what films won Best Picture Oscar pre-1980, going all the way back to the beginning of the film. Uh, but another Oscar travesty that we spoke about off-camera, as we normally do, uh, Rex Harrison for My Fair Lady beating out Peter Sellers and Dr. Strangelove. you got to admit, that is a huge, huge, oh, huge be, mistake. Yeah, it sucks. Okay. Well, I know, no, it's, it's, it's like, but that was indicative of the period, yeah. too. It probably favored. I was going to say, did Mildred Pierce won Best Picture as well? I know it won Best Picture. She won Best Picture. They won Best Picture. They won Best Picture, because that's an amazing movie. That's a really I, I good know movie. Treasure Sierra Madre did not win Best Picture. That would have been my pick. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I damn straight. Exactly. Absolutely. Well, I think that's it. Anyways, well, why don't we wrap this up? Well, that's... So you can get out of my apartment. Yeah, uh, we're about to be evicted from Eric's apartment. So uh, until next what week. What a host. <laughs> we will see you uh, next week, hopefully uh, in new digs. Thank you. Because yeah, he sucks. But I LA Confidential is just Titanic a wonderful film. Titanic more technical filmmaking versus LA Confidential just good filmmaking. Is that a problem? No, we're just, it's okay. We're going to cut anyways because, you know, we're not intimate enough. Just not. Yeah, yeah, go take it out on the couch, you too. But I will agree.